and X's on the top of his papers. At the school with Ms. Johnson taught, she was, she was required to look at each child's past, past records, and she waited to put Jalil's on until the last. However, when she looked at Jalil's paper, she was in for a big surprise. Jalil's first grade teacher wrote this. She said, Jalil's a bright child with a ready laugh. He does his work neatly, and he has good manners. He's, he's a joy to be around. His second grade teacher wrote, Jalil is an exceptional student. He is well liked by his class classmate, but he's troubled because his mother has a terminal illness, and life at home must be a struggle. His third grade teacher said, his mother's death has been hard on him. He tried to do his best, but his father doesn't show much interest. His home life will soon affect him if some steps are not taken to help Jalil. Jalil's fourth grade teacher wrote this. She said, Jalil is withdrawn, doesn't show much interest in school anymore, doesn't have any friends, and sometimes he sleeps in class. By now, Ms. Johnson, she realized the problem. She was ashamed of herself. She said she felt even worse when her students wore her Christmas gifts one year. They were all wrapped in beautiful ribbons and bright paper, except for Jalil. Jalil's present was clumsy wrapped in heavy brown paper that he got from a grocery bag. Ms. Johnson took great pains to open it in the middle of the class while others were present. Some of the children started to laugh when she, when she found a rhinestone bracelet. It had some of the stones were mentioned in the bracelet, and there was a bottle of a half a bottle of perfume in there. But she told the, she, the kids to stop laughing, and she talked about how pretty the bracelet was while she put it on, and she dabbed some of that perfume on her neck. Jalil stayed at the school that day, just long enough to say this to her. He wanted to say this to her. He said, Ms. Johnson, today you smell just like my mom used to smell. After the children left, she cried for an hour. On that very same day, on that day, Ms. Johnson, she quit. She quit teaching reading, and she quit teaching writing, and she quit teaching math. Instead, Ms. Johnson, for the first time in her life, began to teach she paid particular attention to Jalil. As she began to work with him and understand him, his mind seemed to come alive. The more she encouraged him, the faster he responded. By the end of the year, Jalil had become one of the smartest students in the class. And despite the lie that she said in the beginning that she would love all the children the same, Jalil became one of her favorites. A year later, she found a note under her door from Jalil telling her that she was still the best teacher he ever had in his whole life. Six years later went by. She had another note from Jalil. He wrote to her that he finished high school, third in his class, and she was still the best teacher he ever had in his whole life. Four years after high school, four years after high school, she had another letter saying that things had been tough at times. He stayed in school, he stuck it out, and soon graduated from college with the highest of honors. He assured Ms. Johnson that she was still the best teacher he had ever had in his whole life. After college, four more years passed, and another letter came. This time he explained that after he got his last degree, he decided to go a little further. The letter explained that she was still his favorite teacher that he had ever had, but now his name was a little bit longer. The letter was signed Jalil Jackson, M.D. The story doesn't end there. You see, there was yet another letter that spring. Jalil said he met a, met a female, and he was going to get married. He explained that his father died a couple of years ago, and he was just wondering if Mrs. Johnson might sit in a place in a wedding that was usually reserved for the mother of the groom. Of course, Miss Johnson said she would do that. She did that, and guess what? Say what? what? Guess what? what? She wore that bracelet, the one with the seven lines that was missing, and she made sure she was wearing that perfume that Jalil remembered his mother wearing on their last Christmas day. They hugged each other, and Dr. Jackson whispered in Miss Johnson's ear, Thank you, Miss Johnson.
person for believing in me. Thank you so much for making me feel important and showing me that I can make a difference. Ms. Johnson, she was tearing up, she was crying. She was the back. Hey, Jalil, bro, you got it all wrong, son. You were the one that taught me I can make a difference. I didn't know how to teach until I met you. Until I met you. That's the end of the story. You all make a difference in people's lives. Don't underestimate the talent you have when you put your minds together to do the right thing. Thank you. But when my mom died, 
I said, damn, man, this guy, my mother said I was great. But why ain't acting great, man? So I had to go and my go get a move. I went back and got my high school diploma. I went first male in my family to go to college. I went to mortuary school. Now I'm a licensed mortician since 2003. That's the blessings for each and every one of you right now. Over the past 20 years, we lost 375,000 black young brothers. See? While the brothers over there talking right there, see, look at them. See, that's what I'm talking about, but it's all love. I ain't there for them. I ain't there for them. See, I don't shit with cold shit, right? Because I, I ain't scared. Listen to me, man. Ain't nothing y'all gonna do to me, man. God got my back, but I'm here this because I'm here. I'm not getting even paid for this right now. I'm here on free time. I'm losing, and damn, I can't even get 15 minutes of your attention. Huh? That's how y'all do us? We taking time out of our schedule to be with you? So today, I won't stay long. I just want to show you some pictures here and just talk to you, man. But I know that there's only one person here I'm talking to. I don't know which one it is, though. But I believe at the end of the conclusion of the day, somebody gonna get this message, man. How many of you guys is fine to be rappers? Any rappers in here? Let me see your hands. No damn rappers in here? One brother. Good. Good. Because see, I'm just gonna show you three quick pieces of ice cube, right? And this is something, nothing not spooky, nothing spooky on these pictures, y'all. But I just wanted to show you, like, like ice cube, y'all. You know ice cube, right? You know ice cube, right? Right? Ice cube invented this with the guns, black man. Why so many of our rappers, are, oh, every time you look at a rapper, right? What's some of the young rappers out there today? Tell me, I don't, I don't know. I'm just a big daddy candidate. Who? NBA young boy. Is he, is he, is he, you ever do a video with a gun? Exactly. What, what is another brother? Who? Little Dirk. Little Dirk. Him. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Do they, do they do rap? They got the guns, right? Now, who do you think this is for, bro? Our community is suffering out there right now. Why the hell are you gonna keep producing this goddamn mess right here, man? Ice Cube, all us something, man. He said, fuck the police. Use my language, but you guys curse like this in front of your mothers. He said, fuck the police, right? But now he being guarded by the police. He ain't living in the hood no more. He living in the white picket fence gate. Probably with a goddamn white dog, white car. And he leaving us out here in a goddamn gangbang to kill each other. We all damn black, brothers. Do that make any goddamn sense? So I want to take you behind the scenes today. I want to take you behind the scenes today, brother. Even even got our young sisters today, man. Buck wow. You see the sisters, right? Some of our sisters are better shooter than you guys. Oh, yeah. Some of the sisters are banging out better than you guys. Oh, yeah. I tell you, I'll put a sister up against some of you, bang you right on the hell out of here, brother. Right? How, how many sisters do you think I'm patching up on a damn daily basis right now? How many sisters do you think I got on that embalming table on Burger Street, man, when the goddamn blood running down the damn slot seat? Because I'm going to win today or I'm going to win later. You know why I say I'm in the win-win position, family? Because I'm going to win if you listen to this message and take heed and change your damn life, man. It ain't easy. This ain't going to be no easy walk getting out the goddamn hood. But I tell you, I'm going to win when your mother got to give me $10,000 to put your damn head back together. Your mother going to pay me. Because your father said, I know daddy ain't there. He ain't never got no goddamn money. But your mother gonna pay me $10,000 or you gonna stay on my damn Obama table turning into damn maggot food. Turn it to maggot food. Mr. Muhammad. Yes, sir. Can I interject? Focus yes, sir. Real quick. I need you all to take the headsets out your ears. I need you all to take your phones, put them on vibrate or turn them off. I need you to take your phone, put them in your book bag or your pocket. I'm asking you to do this. Take your phones. You could do without them for a little while. You got this afternoon when we go into the hip hop session and all that other stuff. But when we have the speakers up here, I need you to show them the respect that I know that Weak Wake High School can do. That's right. So, take the headsets off. Put them in your pockets. Put your phones in your pockets. Okay. Away. Yes, I'm looking at you. No, don't look at him. I'm looking at you. Yes. Out, off your ears. Take them off. And again, I'm just asking you for your cooperation. 
Listen to what Mr. Muhammad has to say. Because the, mo the moment he said that he has to take newspapers and put them in people's head blew me away. So again, just give them your undivided attention. That's all we're asking you to do. We're not going to be here all day. That's right. Mr. Muhammad, I apologize. That's all right, Go ahead, sir. That's all right, man. Our young brothers are homie, man. They, you know, they, they homie. But when you come into the funeral home, right, this is how you come in, right? Like you come into that Y incision. Yeah. This is how you look when you come from the medical exam. I took a picture of this brother right here. You come in right here. You come in that Y incision. And what that basically means, like you gutted open, man. They, they take your heart. They take your lungs, your kidneys. They take your pancreas, they take your brain, and they put it all right here in your stomach in a plastic garbage bag, and I gotta take that out and put embalming fluid on top of that. And just think about some of you guys won't smoke that damn embalming fluid. Think about that. Not saying you guys, I'm just saying, think about the people that wanna smoke embalming fluid that's gonna kill your damn brain cells. This is how you coming in. And I gotta open you open. That's that wine scissor, man. So I ask you, what is your purpose? What is your passion, man? This is why I do this, man, because I'm trying to save somebody's life here. I ain't going to save all, but I know I can save somebody's damn life that's on the fence. Somebody on the fence that's trying to make that change. Like, this is for you right here. And then I'm going to leave that right there, brother. Let's let you keep looking at that. And then when you come in, I open you up, right? And that's when I open you up. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's like, man, listen to me, man. This is, man, listen to me. It's like eating goddamn coffee cake to me. This is how you come in. When I, when, when I open you up, you come in as that bag is in your damn stomach. I take that bag. That's gone. That's you. Everybody that you know that got murdered look just like this. Uh-huh, this is why huh? mama don't see this. Your mother don't see this. Daddy don't see this. Your brother don't see this. Your sister don't see this. Grandma don't see this, but I see it. This is how, this is what you want? This is what you desire? This is what banging is about? This is what about leaving about that life? This is what you want? Because damn it, you're going to get it. When they take you down to 325 Norfolk Street in North and goddamn gut you open like a cow. This is it right here. I ain't telling you, this is it. I see this all the time. My little cousin was just killed. I don't know if you know about the two brothers that was in the car and crashed into the house on Bergen Street. Well, the passenger was my little cousin. I bombed his ass. Excuse my language. I bombed the boy that was with him in the car. And I just told him two weeks ago, when, um, two weeks prior to his death, with his father, we saw him at the damn cookout, and I told him, I told him, I said, yeah, you got to change your deck. All right, cuz, I got it. I said, bro, you got to change your damn life. Bro. You won't be on that table. Two weeks later, bro, bro on the damn table. On the table, 19, gone. His friend, 18, gone. You understand what I'm saying? So this is that. So you got that, the why open you up, that. Man, listen to me. It's just getting even better, man. Listen. It's getting even better, man. Just listen. Now, this is the sister that we did, right? The sister, right? Your black mother. Uh-huh. She was a damn innocent drop. Your mother. Yes, sir. This your mama. I blocked the face out. This your mama. So when you go around, because none of y'all don't go to no damn country, no damn shooting club. None of y'all go to shooting range like the white boys do. We just got them get out of the car and just start buck wild, bop, 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 don't give a damn who we hit. And the person that we're trying to hit, we miss him, but we get the innocent ones. Today, family, we got to start rethinking this damn thing. We being set up for slaughter, man. We losing countless young black men. And nobody give a damn. Nobody out there on Bourbon Street, nobody here in North crying out. Everybody say, man, they going to die any damn way. They gone. They ain't doing nothing no damn way. And the old people scared when they see you. What they do? They cross the damn street because they scared of you. And y'all guys probably innocent just walking along. They see two or three, four or five of y'all. They scared. Because the media already put into their mind, you're nothing but murderers. You're nothing but killers. You're going to rob them. So now our grandparents got to live their last days in life in a damn house, exiled, because they scared to come outside. You understand what I'm saying? Let's keep it going because I got to get back to the funeral home. Now this brother right here, man, listen to me, man. Man, listen to me. How many of y'all like Captain Crunch? That, that's my type of food right there. Man, Captain, Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch on him. Captain Crunch on him, uh-huh. AK-47. 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 
He got his shit knocked off. You said, who when is you're that? out there doing all that goddamn shooting, see, you never see the end results of what you're shooting at. Right? When y'all shoot, bow, 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 you ain't looking to see what happened to the damn victim. You know he got hit. But see, you got to see what got there when he landed on that goddamn ground. The damage that you're causing to your own people. That shit was. We got to do better, family. This is our time, man. God didn't give birth to you, man, in this country, in this world. We're in the best country right goddamn now. To be anything we want. Lawyers, doctors, engineers, maintenance workers, electricians, funeral directors, anything entrepreneurs. Open up your own business. You can be anything you want, man. You ain't gonna be out there hurting your own people and you damn sure don't want to see yourself killed because this is what your mother got to deal with when she paid me. This is what your mother got to pay me, family. Your mother paying me just for you to become maggot food at 15. Some of you, when I embalm you, you get frozen in time for 17, at 17 years old. When you get in this damn casket, family, I can put any one of you right down. And I'll tell you, I'll pay you $500. If anybody wants to accept the challenge, it's up to you. And I promise I'll pay it. I'm gonna put you in this casket. And I'm gonna close it and lock it. Let me see if you can get out. Uh. Huh? You can So this is it, right? But, but I'm sorry, but if I see that brother on the street, I'm going to offer him the opportunity, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he going to come down to cotton. He's going to be like, where Muhammad at? I'm going to get in that casket. But I'm going to get you in there. I, I did it so many times, brother. You ain't get one, one ain't get out yet, brother. One ain't get out yet. One more picture, family. Oh, man. How many of y'all like Frosty Flakes? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
If you can't go to the best thing you can do, brother, entrepreneurship. Right. Entrepreneurship is right. the best way, man. Get right. that damn money. Right. right? I get paid. Right there. Right. I get paid two thousand dollars, man. Right. Right. When, I go, when I go speak okay. to the goddamn schools, man, the white folk gonna pay me, man. When I go speak at the woman, they gonna pay me. I'm doing this for free. I'm giving it because I'm getting it because every time and then, every now and then, you gotta give back free to your people, man. But I get paid, so I'm saying if you got a goal, if you're passionate about something. But you ain't gonna win always being on Facebook and Instagram, brother. You understand what I'm saying, man? So listen, man, either we can address the issue now, or I'm gonna be dressing one of you later. Thank you, brothers. because my dad got murdered when I was 12. And then I decided, after I got kicked out, I wanted to be a mortician. I always, that was my passion. So I went back, man, got my high school diploma, went first to my man, go to college, and I've been at Cotton Funeral Service since 2001. But I'm always traveling, I'm over in Kansas. I'll be, like this month, I'll be in South Carolina. Next month, I'm going to Wichita, Kansas. And all that's paid for, they pay for the goddamn ticket and the room, and give me my money when I get there. So I'm saying, greatness of pie. Anybody else, y'all good? Yes, sir, one more question. Coffee and eat a butter roll looking at that. That's what I do every day. But my heart hurt when I got to get one of you brothers on that table, man. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Yo, yo, give me some five dollars for you, man. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you. Thank you.